my protection, God is my own. Go! 
God truly is our all in all. God truly is our all in all. I will be reading from Psalms 22. If you would like to follow along with me, Psalm 22, verses 1 through 18. Plea for deliverance from suffering and hostility. Verse 1. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my growing? Oh, my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel, in you our ancestors trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your calls to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a raving and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a postured, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircle me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all of my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves. And for my clothing, they cast lots. The word of God for the people of God. Hear now words from Psalm 23, verses 1 through 6. The Divine Shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. This is the word of God for the people of God. This morning, as Deontes and I 
went over the changes we were making in the worship service. Mr. Wembley had the audacity to ask me a very profound question. Pastor, what is the title of your sermon today? And I realized in that I had forgotten to come up with a title. But now as I think about it, I think this one is called In Between. When I started at Candler School of Theology in the fall of 2015, our commencement speaker presented these verses to us from Psalm 22 and Psalm 23. And he asked us a simple question. He said, do you know what happens in between Psalm 22 and Psalm 23? Do you know what happens in the moments where you are in the valley, believing you are alone, lost, scared, and angry? to the moments when you are on the mountaintop, assured that God is with you, that you are surrounded in love. And he offered this simple answer. Life. Life is what happens between Psalm 22 and Psalm 23. The divine wisdom of placing these two psalms next to each other fills my heart with comfort because it testifies to a God who loves you no matter where you are. A God who is there when you are kicking, screaming, cursing, and crying and a God who loves you when you are assured everything's going to be okay. But even more so than that, it testifies to a God that wants you, all of you, every day, every moment, however you are, God wants to surround you in love. God wants you to come God wants you to be honest. So much of the church, we talk about Psalm 23. We talk about being happy. We talk about rejoicing, and we talk about these things, and we get this sense that this is how we're supposed to be all the time. Modern church practices sometimes just want to overemphasize joy. And to be fair, that's okay. Joy's easy. <laughs> it's pretty easy to be happy. But God wants us at worship. God wants to be with us even when we're sad, even when we're angry, even when we are alone. God wants us to come fully and honestly with everything we feel, if you are angry, give it to God. If you are sad, give it to God. If you question why, give it to God. God is big enough to take it. God is big enough to hear it. I will admit to this, I have been angry. I have been angry since Friday night. I am angry that my boss, my friend, my colleague, my sister is not here with us today. Not because I'm let down or not because I'm angry about the responsibility. But my first memory of Terry is her wrapping Jasmine up and saying, this is our other daughter. With a large smile and pride. And I just hate that this time is when it, this all fell on us. And I've been telling God this since I heard. And you know what Psalm 22 says? God hears it. God acknowledges it. And God is okay 
with me feeling this way. There are simply times we cannot sing, it is well with my soul. We may have forgotten the words, but there's a beautiful truth that comes when we take everything to God, when we take our honest and real selves to God. God shows up. God puts, a, puts an arm around us and says, it's okay, baby. We're going to get through this. My mom, who I deeply admire and respect and look to as a model for how ministry should, should be done, shared this story with me one time. Because I was simply reflecting on our lives. My mother was ordained, I believe in 1980, or was ordained deacon in 1981, ordained elder in 1984. And Dr. Rose Tucker, I think you could probably testify, not the easiest time to simply be a woman called to serve the Lord. And she caught a lot of flack for it. We were appointed in a town called Rossville, Georgia, which is right on the Tennessee line near Chickamauga Battlefield. I suffered from asthma in a scary way. The ER knew who we are and knew to have oxygen if they saw my mother's car pull into the parking lot. And on top of that, and all the stuff that was going on with her being a woman simply in the rural Georgia, my parents' marriage came to an end. And being a small town, small towns have this thing they like to do, talk about any and everything. And dwelling on this, I was, as an older person, I was perplexed. I was like, Mom, how did you deal with this? How did you do it? And she said, sweetie, simple truth is I had no choice. If I gave up, you'd die. And I wasn't having that. But I can tell you when I knew everything was going to be okay. I was getting you ready for preschool one morning. And we had the Today Show on which was very common in my house. My first words might have been, good morning, Jane and Bryant. And in this moment, I was so overwhelmed, she said. I was calling out to God, how can I do this? I can't do this. Please don't make me go on today. Please don't make me go to church. Please let me just stop today. And then the TV seemed to get louder. And the Today Show was covering this hot new trend, this new TV show that was coming out. And they played the theme song. And the theme song was from the show, what was about to be a major hit in pop culture, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And she said, sweetie, I heard the words, heroes in a half shell, turtle power, and I began to hysterically laugh. I laughed like I had lost my mind. I could not control it. I could not just hold it in, and in my laughter, God said, if you can laugh, we can get through this. When you give yourself honestly to God, God can comfort you honestly. If you tell God, I don't think it is well with my soul, our God takes you by the hand and says, I'll teach you the words. If you feel that you are at Psalm 22, God can pick you up and carry you to Psalm 23, if you're honest. 
sisters and brothers, take it to God. Amen, amen. and amen. Sisters and brothers, leave that from this place knowing that you serve, you worship, you walk alongside a God who loves you all the time, even when you are angry, even when you are sad. A God that will put their arm around you and say, we're going to get through this, sugar. Go forth in that assurance in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.